everyone. The video is finally here. It's the John's Bones Human Spine Collection. John's Bones. All right, so as you guys might or might not know, I actually have, and I claim, the largest human spine collection in the entire country. So let's talk a little bit about the collection, how it started, why I do what I do, and a little bit more about unique spines in the collection. But first, we just got a new package into the showroom, so let's open it up together. All right, let's see what's behind envelope number one. Ooh, we have some human ribs. So this is the left side of the ribs, the 12 of them that come in. And this is from an old medical collection. Um, the individual was liquidating their stock, so I was able to purchase it for the showroom. These are most desirable by members of Search and Rescue. They love purchasing ribs in order to train their dogs how to find human remains. Ribs. All right, let's continue with the unboxing. Let's see what's behind door number two. I wonder what it can be. I wonder what this is, ladies and gentlemen. For the spine video, I wonder what we got in the mail today. Let's find out together. All right. Let's see what it is. Oh, wow. It's another spine. We got another spine into the showroom. Wow, with a really, really weird prep work. Yeah, just the way that the wires come down here. I've actually never seen a preparation method like that before. Super bizarre. Here we have a whole human spine to add to the collection. I wanted you guys to know that this is always an ongoing collection. I'm actively working on it. I'm actively working to preserve as many spines as possible. God, this is such a weird preparation. We have a spine in. So here we have it. This is such a gorgeous, amazing human spine. Let's see what else is in the box. But before in this little envelope, we actually have the coccyx. The coccyx actually fits below the sacrum right here. And for a lot of spine models, they actually um, are lost. So to find ones with original coccyx are pretty rare. Don't worry, spine. I'll fix you. I'll restore you to your former glory. Someone's gotta do the work, right, Eric? So if you guys can't tell, I'm fixing the spine because at one point this became removed. So I'm just trying to make sure that it's re-articulated and assembled. Guys, subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you wanna support the channel, See more cool bone content. I get this thing to stop spinning. Here is the, the attached coccyx to the sacrum. The coccyx to the sacrum. And now we are gonna break for lunch and I'll be back after my belly is full. Oh wait, we have to open the second mystery item. So let's see what's inside door number two. Nick, what do you think it is? What do you think's behind door number two? I have no idea. Yeah, who would have guessed, guys? It's another spine for the spine wall video. Dude, why did you pretend like it was an arm then if you knew it was two spines? You rat dog. I lied. <laughs> I lied. I lied. Ta da! We have another spine. Beautiful. Great condition. Is it prepared better? No. Actually, yeah, this is just, yeah, this is medical. Perfect. This is by Adam Woolley. Stop texting me. I'm trying to make a YouTube video for the for the viewers. Guys, I'm being candid today. No more, no more stop, John John. No more. Hi, my name is John at John's Bones, and we're an osteological supply company based out of Brooklyn, New York. And today we're gonna to talk about the medical bone trades and some of the inherent injustices that happen within this community and how we can work on better. Oh my god, shut up! We have two new spines at the showroom. Um, we want to hang this on the wall to make sure they're preserved to the best of my ability. I'm really honored to have these pieces in. It's such an important part of medical history, and I think someone needs to preserve it and talk about it. So we're gonna do that today. So why did I start the collection? Well, out of all the bones in the human body, the vertebral column and all of the spines have always been my personal favorite. I am a classically trained designer, so from a structural standpoint, for me, the spine is the most unique and has the most interesting elements to it 
when it comes to the general anatomy of the human skeleton, I've always resonated with the spine. For instance, the way that it's able to bend forward but not go too far back, as well as maintaining a rigidity to it. The spine is such a beautiful object. It was something that always fascinated me from a young age. Fun fact, I actually have a spine tattoo next to my spine for how much I love them. But actually, when I was in high school, in my health teacher's classroom, she actually had a spine model. And I was 16 at the time, and I was so fascinated with it that I asked her, Miss Nicolini, is it possible for me to look at this spine? And she actually said no. It was too expensive, and this was just a plastic model. And if I broke it, the school couldn't afford a new one. So out of spite, I decided to buy every single spine in the US. It's a joke. Part of it. There's some truth in that, but no, no, no. That's one of the early, early stories is um, the inaccessibility I had when I wanted to learn and study bones um, came very early on when I was in high school. And later on, I wanted to make the collection more accessible and more open to everybody. So the spine collection is actually open to researchers. Um, there was one professor that was doing research on vertebral columns, looking at the anatomical variation between one spine to the other. And we opened the collection up to researchers that want to come to see and view the collection. The first ever human bone piece I ever got was when I was 17 years old and it was actually a cervical region of the spine. And that really was the thing that got me into osteology. And I later moved to New York and learned more about the medical bone trade. So why did I start the spine wall though? I started it to try to combat a real issue that I noticed within the industry. So in the osteological industry within buyers and sellers, there's a term called breaking up diamonds. So the human spine is actually composed of 24 individual vertebrae plus the sacrum. Now, oftentimes retail, a spine will cost between $600 to $1,200, but dealers and other collectors will take a spine, they'll cut the wiring and part it out, and they'll sell each vertebrae for $60 to $80 a piece, plus the sacrum for $220. So $80 times 24 is $1920 plus the $220 sacrum, you could easily net over $2,000 breaking up the spine. And this is actually an industry standard. When I started up the practice, this was actually something I noticed. In the industry, a spine is worth more parted out than it actually is in one piece. This is where the term breaking up diamonds comes from, where you take a bigger diamond and you break it up into smaller pieces just because it's harder to sell the larger diamond itself. So for me, another analogy is like, this is like taking pages of a book ripping it out, framing it, and selling it for profit. I never wanted profit to come in between me and what I do here at John's Bones, so I made it my goal to preserve as many spines as possible. So in my career, I've actually seen 400 plus spines destroyed due to this method, and I see this as such an injustice. Once these pieces are broken up, they can never be returned and put back together. So we really made it our goal to preserve as many pieces as possible so researchers and institutions can stand to benefit from it. So what's actually in the spine wall? Here we have a collection of spines that come from all over the US and all over the world. And you can actually see here at the top, it has a darker gradient where we have the oldest spines on top leading to some of the more modern pieces. So actually the color comes from the age and the patina of it um, is dictated by how old the piece is. We also noticed here some of the spines that have a more yellowish color actually have a varnish on it. When I was doing research at the medical collection in Thailand, the Sealy Lat Anatomical Collection, we noticed because of the high humidity of their collection, they were actually coating the skeletons in varnish in order to stop it from cracking. So this is why we see some of that coloration for those spines. So typically in countries that have low humidity, this is actually why the spines have this coating on it. So we made it our goal to try to show the history of these pieces from oldest to newest and it's something that I'm proud to have here today. One other thing I think is really important is to call out the scale of this industry. According to Scott Carnegie's The Red Market, in 1983, there were over 60,000 skulls shipped to the US and the UK alone in one year. So a lot of people, when they see the wall, it gives them a very visceral reaction. It's very overwhelming just due to the sheer number of bones that there are. 
but I really wanted to set a precedent of what really happened in this industry and how many pieces are really out there. Um, this is nothing compared to how many were sold all the way from 19, the 1900s to modern times. And I just wanted to raise more awareness about that. But let's take a look at some of the rare pieces in the collection. Um, this spine here was one that came from a medical collection and this individual had extreme osteoarthritis. So if we could see here, there would be intervertebral discs and oftentimes if you get a herniated disc, it would protrude out and the bone would grow around it. So this is just an extreme example of arthritis and what can happen to an individual um, over time in the course of their life. So this stands as an amazing teaching aid for anatomists to learn more about skeletal anatomy. This is why having a large sample size is so important. People always go, why do you need so many bones? And the reason is because of anatomical variation. Some people are smaller, some people are larger. And if you're at a high level of study, you need to see the nuances of skeletons in order to truly understand how the spine works. If someone had a rare pathology or abnormality and you had only seen one spine your entire career, you would think this is normal. This is why having a, such a large sample size is important for anatomists and researchers. My goal has always been to make osteology more accessible to everybody, but if you look at the entire showroom, almost everything is available for purchase for universities and institutions. The spine wall is one of the only things that we don't have publicly listed. This is because my goal is to eventually donate this to a museum one day. My only stipulation is it has to be for public display. I want everybody, no matter where you are in the world, to be able to view this this piece and view this collection to be able to learn from it. So from the meantime, that's why we have it at the John's Bones showroom, but we have plans to eventually find a museum that's able to take it. So we have all types of spines here on the spine wall with different conditions, different pathologies. This one that's actually quite interesting, you can see the sacrum hasn't fully fused. So bones fuse at different developmental stages in life. So you can actually identify the individual's age based on how the bones have fused. So because this one has infused, it gives us an idea of how old this individual is. Um, from my estimates, this one is between 10 to 14 years old. Where did the spines come from originally? Well, the majority of these pieces were from half skeleton bone boxes. Unfortunately enough, for one reason or the other, they were parted away from the bone box and purchased individually. May that be from homes or private collections or collectors that purchased these pieces. So oftentimes a half skeleton bone box would have one skull, one spine, and one half of the skeleton. But as I discussed earlier in this video, people like to break things up because it's easier to sell. So the spines get separated from the original bone box. So a lot of these spines are from these bone boxes that then get inherited. I'm actively working on improving and building the collection as more pieces come available, like the ones that we unboxed earlier in the video. We always try to make sure that we can acquire as many as possible to add them to the wall. My goal is to have as many spines. Well, there you have it, guys. Be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. And it's always been my goal to be as open as possible, and I want to answer your questions. So in this video, if you have questions or anything that you want to know more, be sure to write it in the comments, and I'll make another follow-up video answering all of those questions.